तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए पलगन श्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our beloved our utmost dear gansham maharaj the path maker to our liberation our puja guru ji puja santo puja bhagat ji and all of you devotees jay swami narayan continuing on from last week's lecture on bhagwan charitras we saw and reflected that simple messages simple incidences gave great great principles bhagwan's vision is completely different from everyone else's vision and even in the span of 49 years bhagwan spent his you can say human body life on this earth in the great scripture hari charitramrut sagar it said that maharaj's charitras are apar meaning innumerable countless even in a 49 year span countless charitras were performed you're probably thinking how so because time is limited that's why bhagwan even if he does a charitra every second from the time he was born till the time he went back to akshardham still would be limit it wouldn't be innumerable but bhagwan doesn't have only one form he takes infinite forms and does various kinds of charitras in various brahmans that's his greatness that's his powers so today again we'd like to continue with maharaj's charitra and how he spent his time in dada khatchar's darbar and what small incidences he showed displayed portrayed and through that how great of a principle we can gain today let's take a look this charitra is called always present Maharaj was in Dada Khachar's darbar in the north facing rooms on the opposite side in the south facing rooms of Vasudev Narayan's orda in these rooms Shri Ji Maharaj had commanded Narayan Ji bhai to make the idol of Gopinath Ji see when Bhagwan came on this earth and after he pretty much took over the sampradaya the swamnarayan sect he decided to build six grand temples out of the six grand temples one of the temples that he constructed was in gadara or also known as gadpur and there in each temple bhagwan constructed he had he has installed various various idols in vartal he installed his own idol of hari krishna maharaj and said that this form here that you're looking at the form in akshardham and the form that is present in front of you right now manifest there is not even an atoms difference between any of these three forms they are one in that fashion other mandirs he installed various idols like narayan deo in bhuj and 
in Vartal, Lakshmina, and Dev in the center, in various, various other mandirs. But especially for the happiness of others, while he was constructing, while construction was going on for Gadpur Temple, he himself stood over Narayan Jiva. Narayan Jiva was a sculptor to make the idol of Gopinathji that he was going to install in the center in Gadpur. Narayan Jiva was a sculptor and he was assigned to this seva. Sri Jumaraj used to visit him three to four times in a day and tell him to be careful and to make the murti the exact same replication of his own manifest form. Maharaj told him to exactly match his face, arms, legs, each and every body part. Out of the six temples, out of the six temples, there's various idols installed. There's two idols that everyone knows about, that are infamous, that I've mentioned. Number one is Hare Krishna Maharaj, that many, many devotees do the dhyana of. And number two is Gopinath Ji Maharaj. See, Maharaj wanted to exactly replicate his manifest form right there and then, measurement to measurement, from his fingers, hands, arms, legs, nose, eyes, each and every minute detail Bhagwan wanted to replicate into that idol of Gopinath Ji and install it in the Mandir of Gadpur. So he commanded Narayan Jibai to be careful, not to mess anything up, be careful, stay cautious, and we'd visit him three to four times, exactly three to four times in a day to see what he was doing, how he was going about. Maharaj even drew how he wanted the nose to be shaped on a piece of paper and gave it to Narayan Jibai. Now, I'm reminded of our Puja Guruji in this exact incident. After reading this Charitra, Puja Guruji was reminded why? Because as you know here in Swamran Mandir Loyadam, New Jersey, Gansha Maharaj resides here. And in 2014, Puja Guruji himself installed this idol here in the Murti or in this temple, which First, with all the, you can say, processes, according to the Shikshapatri, the idol was given by the, the diocese of Vartal Temple. And after that, Guruji himself performed the Arti. And in that time, he, while he was doing this process, he took the mic and he shared his whole experience of how he stood over this idol for weeks at a time. See, the story behind that is that in India, Gujarat is a state, and above Gujarat is the state of Rajasthan. And there, there is very, very rare and beautiful stone, marble, that's only in Rajasthan, the caves of Rajasthan, you can say. And there, there is a very famous, famous, you can say, sculpture, sculptor by the name of Pandey, Satyanarayan Pandey. And he himself was in contact with Puja Guruji. And Puja Guruji said, I want to, you can say, make the idol of God by your hands. So, Satyanarayan Bay accepted this, but it was usually how the process worked was that many saints came to him and they would take the order, he would take the order. Maybe even Santos came with uh, you know, an idol of God that they really, really liked that would it would be great if it could be replicated to the closest degree. So they would give him a photo and he would maybe work maybe two, three months on the idol itself. And when it was done, they would call and the idol would be picked up and it would be installed in mandirs. This is how he operated. But 
once he met puja guruji he saw his different and unique style puja guruji himself weeks at a time stayed in jaipur and watched over how this satyanarayan bhai was sculpting over the murti each and every curve each and every body part of bhagwan now the unique part is that puja guruji stayed there and watched but that mur- this murti that is made of gansham maharaj everyone in the swamnarayan sect is saying that we have never seen an idol before like this so serene so beautiful so exactly proportionate and puja guruji himself he looked over this whole work and after at the end result it seemed like bhagwan himself was inside of puja guruji doing each and every one of his work and through that in 2014 when this idol was installed everyone was awed amazed and until now still nowadays many many hari bhaktos many many keep a wallpaper of maharaj on their phones on their computers and they meditate upon this maharaj himself in that story it replicates in it's similar to this one because maharaj himself arms face everything he wanted exactly to be proportionate and due to that factor maharaj himself made this murti of gopinath ji this is how much caution he was taking while the form was being made after it was completed maharaj said it was perfectly made after the murti pratishta was completed maharaj disappeared into the murti for 2 hours then came out and performed the arti and then again merged back into the idol then appeared after 24 minutes this is maharaj's leela only for those who have seen only for those who have been or were at that time only if we can go back in time we would be able to have the same darshan but now it's all in our hearts we have to see it in our hearts but in that time maharaj himself performed the arti and went back into the idol showing all the devotees there showing all the santos there that i am ever present in my idol in my idol that is installed and maharaj was giving a message and in the vachanamrut kadada first chapter 68 maharaj says the murti which god has given for worship by his command are of eight types god himself personally enters these murtis and resides within them in the same way god also resides in the heart of a sant this is bhagwan bhagwan can only do this but yet again going back in that time of 2014 when puja guruji was there and while the process of installation was going on brahmans were particularly one brahman was singing all the vedic you can say hymns and verses and sloks to install the idol because of the process while that was going on puja guru puja guru ji was standing there as well and only the brahman saw everyone else there was at least 700 devotees in this church in this temple at that time only the brahman saw maharaj himself gave darshan to him gave him his vision from that idol and told him and smiled at him and told him you are very lucky to perform this you can say you can say inauguration of this idol and he went back inside the idol proving that even in that time while puja guruji was there bhagwan even the process was still occurring bhagwan had already sat inside the murti by puja guruji's vision by puja guruji's drashti so that's the greatness of not only bhagwan but our puja guruji 
that he installed an idol and nowadays many 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 devotees have darshan of Maharaj from this idol so Maharaj's idol is forever present we may think of it as solid marble or solid stone but in reality Bhagwan himself resides and there's many many charitras that come with this I'm reminded of a charitra before when we had a temple in Loya it was ran by santos now right now it is ran, ran by santos but female santos but before when our santos resided there Loya Dam santos Mara, there was two floors to that temple the first floor was Maharaj himself his siyas in there and the second floor was where santos lived as well as Maharaj's clothing were organized there so there was one Swami that served Maharaj and all the other santos were sleeping so he would wake up very early so he can serve Maharaj and decorate Maharaj with nice clothing and nice uh, ornaments and then he would go off with his other duties so no one had woken up only that one Swami had wo woken up and he had taken a shower and usually the night before he would select a uh, clothing for Maharaj so then it wouldn't he wouldn't get late in the morning so he had already selected uh, a clothing that he liked and he had brought it down from the hangar and he had brought it down to the first floor he woke up Bhagwan and then he put the vagas there on the side and somehow in his mind he decided that I don't want to put these vaga on Maharaj I would not prefer it I would like another I would like uh, another color of clothing so he went upstairs again and in after five minutes he selected something and he returned back downstairs and when he returned into the siyasa no santos were awake no one else was in the mandir himself but three other santo and one of them was him he entered the siyasan and whichever vaga that he had selected the night before that he had left there Bhagwan had worn ready to go there was no one awake only it was just Bhagwan and then the curtain and then the Swami the Swami was upstairs and the, by the time he had came down Bhagwan was already dressed well, no, number one. No, no one was awake. So that's number one, that proof that who else could do it. And number two, even if someone was awake, no one can dress Bhagwan that quickly. Because it takes time to dress up Bhagwan and decorate, w decorate him with various ornaments. Proving these two points, Bhagwan himself wore, the, wore those clothes proving that Bhagwan himself resides in his idol so we should also when, when we come to the mandir we should always worship respect the idol never ever disrespect by talking aloud or running around or doing any kind of behavior which is not appropriate in mandir so that's the charitra of Maharaj how he is present in his idol moving on to another charitra this, the title of this charitra is Do Everything to Please Maharaj At one time Sukmuni, meaning Shukanan Swami Was riding on the porch Of the of porch side of Akshorodi Akshorodi is You can say Bhagwan's Personal home when he, he, when he resided here On earth in Gandhara He stayed in Akshorodi, meaning it's a Small personal home just for Maharaj outside of the home by the porch side Shukanan Swami was writing Shukanan Swami was a great scholar a very young young age scholar but a great scholar and he had the ability to write he was one of the composers of the Vachnamrut as well but he wrote all day and all night and by the morning he had written 14 pages Bhagwan had probably given him something to write some kind of assignment to write a scripture or many santos in that time had such kinds of assignments by a Bhagwan and Swami all day and all night wrote without sleeping even at night 
and by the morning time he had written 14 pages then Maharaj came out of it, Aksharwadi when he woke up Maharaj woke up and he came out and he took the pages in his hand and without even asking he tore the pages without even reading a single page now imagine that <clears throat> one has an essay due and it's a 20 page essay and it's the last day to do it and of course our procrastination we wait till the last day and we pull an all nighter and finish the essay in the morning it's due at 8 a.m. now you finish your essay at 7 o'clock and you go to take a shower and after you come back you're, you found out that your computer was on again your small brother had logged in and somehow you can't find the file you, f you didn't send the file you were about to send it you decided you were going to proofread it again one more time and then send it after you came out of the shower yet your brother he must have deleted it you looked, you looked for the file, you searched your computer yet you couldn't find the file you asked your brother he said I was just going on there to play games what to do without any kind of you can say question you start to get angry at him blame him, you don't know what to do because you know that this is a big paper that's due and it's part of your it's a it's a big part of your grade it plays a big effect on your grade yet you have nothing to do what to do what understanding to keep at that time well obviously we could believe Bhagwan to be Sarvakarta that's the main all doership Bhagwan is doing everything to keep ourselves steady you can move to alternatives by asking for extensions but in that same formality if you were in Swami's position let's take a look what Swami did so Maharaj came out without any question suppose he was just sitting right here and Shukran Swami is writing Maharaj just took the papers in his hands just grabbed them and just ripped them apart without reading a single page there Nityanand Swami, another scholar who also composed the Vachnamrut, an elite saint was observing the whole incident with his eyes from afar so after Maharaj passed Maharaj went off to a, after leaving uh, Akshawardi Shuk Shukan Swami just sat there after Maharaj passed, Nityanand Swami who observed this whole incident who knew that from the night time till or from that day before till that whole night Shukmuni was writing and writing and writing and he had developed something very great he knew this so Nityan Swami worried about Shukaran Swami that he might be hurt or that he, would, he might be wondering why Maharaj did this came to Shukmuni Shukaran Swami and asked don't you have any doubts that why Maharaj tore up the 14 pages without even ring, reading a single page? Don't you have doubts why Maharaj did this? And there, Shukanan Swami humbly replied, All I wanted to do was please Maharaj. So even if he was pleased by tearing the pages, then I am fulfilling my goal as a servant. Each and every action. Nan Santo performed was to please Maharaj in, in this incident Shukaran Swami showed his understanding how he replied back to Nityanand Swami that it doesn't matter if Maharaj reads the 14 pages or if he puts them in a book and publishes it and gives it to everyone or if he tears it up or if he uses it for fire fuel or if he just puts them away it does not matter to me at all I do not care moreover I want to please Maharaj that's why I've written these 14 pages and Maharaj is all-knowing and he knows 
He knows for a fact that I am doing it to please Him. So, I have got His Rajipo in that way. In the Vachnamrut, Kadiani third chapter, Maharaj himself, these are Maharaj's words, says that this Sukmuni, meaning Shukran Swami, is a great sadhu. From the day he began staying with me, his enthusiasm has been ever increasing, in fact. It has never diminished. Thus, he is like Muktanan Swami. Now, Shukanan Swami's age, 24, 23, 24. Muktanan Swami's age, 50 plus. A 25 year gap. And Muktanan Swami, as we talked about, is the mother of satsang. He played the role of the disciple of Maharaj as well as the guru of Maharaj. No other sant has played such a role. And Maharaj himself said that this Shukanan Swami is a great sadhu. How so? He had the understanding that Maharaj wanted. How so? Well, his enthusiasm was increasing day by day in satsang. How so? Even till the beginning of when he became a sadhu, till that time, he had never had any doubts in Maharaj himself. That's why Maharaj himself had to say, he has not said this comment for any other sant in the Vachnamrut, like this way, but only for Shukanan Swami, who is the age of 23, and Muktanan Swami, who is the age of 50 plus, had to say that this Shukanan Swami is a great sadhu. Because of his enthusiasm, thus, he is like Muktanan Swami. So, even Nansanto's charitras teach us that there's many, many different, different incidences that will occur in our life. But the way we take them, the way we encounter them, the way we envision them is the cause of if we receive Maharaj's Rajipo, Puja Guruji's Rajipo, or, Puja, or Maharaj and Guruji's Kurajipo. It's all up to us how we engage in that way. So learning from Sadhguru Shukanan Swami, learning from Ma how Maharaj is always present in his idol, we should gain these aspects and apply it to our daily life. Also, just to note, Yutsibir 2017's registration form has been uploaded on our website, theswaminarayan.org. So please make sure to register if you are able to come. It's in Tampa, Florida from the dates of July 6th to July 9th. Puja Guruji will be arriving there. And on July 9th, all of the participants of Yutsibir, along with the adults, will get to perform the pujan of Puja Guruji there live. So it's a very, very big thing because of the uh, the unique festival, which is festival of Guru Purnima. And it, we're very fortunate to have such a festival where all the kids will be present and will be able to receive the blessings of Puja Guruji. Jai Swami Narayan.
वर्णिवेशमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय ऑल माइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलवड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कठोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिज जय स्वामी नारायण टूडे सदगुरु सिंह स्कूलानंद स्वामी इज गोइंग टू नारेट आउट different different devotees incident written in 157th chapter in bhakta chintamani vadi kanam desh amod ma dvij bhat dinanath samshayavat sat sang ma hato an samje anath Nishkuranan Swami described here the incident happened to Dinanath Bhatt. There was a devotee by the name of Dinanath Bhatt. He lived in the town of Amod. Initially, he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan by the company of one of the sons of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, but as he was a Brahmin, so even the worshiping the other deities and other gods he forsake all of them and he only worship bhagwan swami narayan such was his first inclination for bhagwan swami narayan's divinity as well as bhagwan swami narayan's supremacy he knew that bhagwan swami narayan is the only god on this earth but what happened after some years he had passed in the satsang and something happened to his life which totally diverted him from the satsang the sant by whose company dinanath but entered into satsang fellowship meaning first by keeping the company of a sant dinanath but understood and realized the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan the same sant he has an inclination of uh like he likes something like the words which praise only to him and that's why he always desire such kind of praise or such kind of honor from even maharaj and once upon a time maharaj ignore his desire to be honor in such sang and only because of this insult by maharaj that sant because of his ignorance he gave up satsang and he even fell down from the satsang fellowship and that's why according to maharaj rules and according to his own desire that sant he himself remained aloof from the satsang meaning he walked out from the satsang now the same sant came there to meet dinanath bhat because he knew that i am a guru of dinanath bhat i have make uh, i have make him understood that bhagwan swami narayan is a god and i myself gave him knowledge regarding bhagwan swami narayan's divinity and supremacy so if i this time inform him that i was wrong before and now bhagwan swami narayan is not bhagwan if i gave him this kind of information or knowledge then that duty definitely follow me and he also become my duties and not remain a duty of bhagwan swami narayan thinking in this way that sant again came to meet dinanath bhat there he according to his plan he explained to dinanath bhat that what i i am feeling right now that is bhagwan swami narayan is not a god he is not a bhagwan in this way he explained many many things in opposition of bhagwan swami narayan to dinanath bhat 
even though dinanath bhat was a very learned person he was a very uh, uh, very very learned in sanskrit and he was a scholar and as he was a brahmin so even he knows all the scriptures he very well aware what was written in the scriptures still he believed and he accepted what the sant explained to him the totally false and the totally wrong information regarding bhagwan swami narayan but this time dinanand would accepted those informations those were the false and wrong for bhagwan swami narayan and as he accepted those information he himself wear out his kanthi and he even didn't he even stop to worship bhagwan swami narayan and to do his puja and everything now the in this way dinanath but also came out from the satsang he had given up all the all the other things like worshiping maharaj doing his kirtans and doing as all making some new verses praising maharaj or singing his glories in this way he given up all these things and he uh, only remain a gentleman and he remain only in a society for benefit of the society but he didn't work for bhagwan swami narayan or his santo now what was happen after some times there was a ghost in his town and that ghost as dinanath but did not remain as a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan so he wanted to enter into the body of dinanath but but as dinanath but had made many many verses for bhagwan swami narayan and many times he had served bhagwan swami narayan himself as well as many times he had offered many many kinds of different different kinds of service for bhagwan swami narayan and his santo that's why that ghost cannot enter into the body of dinanath but and that's why he desired to enter some one else body so that ghost entered into the body of dinanath bhat's daughter then that ghost entered into the body of dinanath bhat's daughter then her behavior is totally changed what she did she came inside the home she collected all the clothes of the all the all of her family members and throw out outside the home again she a uh, collector pebbles and dust and all the other such kinds of things from outside and throw it inside the home not only that but as in the kitchen they have prepare a uh, good meal or anything they have prepared food or they have a milk or a ghee or edible oils or even they have uh water in the pots then this ghost uh in the uh, in the body of dinanath bhat's daughter she collected the dirt and all such kind of unpious things and throw out inside the kitchen in all these foods and oils and milk in this way she disturb and she make many many kinds of difficulties for all the other family members so this is not only for a problem of dinanath bhat's daughter but this ghost even make and create many many problems for whole the family so dinanath bhat indirectly also become disturbed by this ghost now dinanath bhat he was a very learned brahmin and he even knew many many scriptures in the sans- sanskrit so even he tried in many different ways so that this ghost can be removed from the body of her daughter his daughter but 
all his practice, all his scriptural studies and all these other kinds of uses, those all kinds of things were in vain, meaning they ne uh, didn't work anything on that course. Now, with the help of the black magic people and such other types of people for removing this ghost from the body of his daughter, but that's also d didn't work. Finally, Dinanath but remember Bhagwan Swami Narayan that for many years I have accepted refuge of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. I even praise him by making a new verses in the Sanskrit. I even perform his puja for many years. I even serve santos of Bhagwan Swami Narayan for many many years. And why this ghost cannot be removed from my daughter's body? And why it disturbed, it created new new problems, everyday new problems in my home. By thinking in this way, he realized his mistake, that I have made a great mistake in my life. Because Bhagwan Swaminar is a Supreme Lord. And why I forsake his refuge and why I stop to worshipping him. So in this way he realized his mistake and he decided to go there to uh, go there to the place wherever Maharaj was residing at the time and finally Dinanath Bhatt reached there to the Ma for the darshan of Maharaj with his daughter and he bowed down to Maharaj he requested he pleaded he even performed many many downwards to Maharaj and tears came out from his eyes and while uh, hair raising sentiment his voice became clogged and he prays to Maharaj Maharaj please forgive me that was my great mistake I have misunderstanding regarding your form your existence so please forgive me in this way he pleaded many many times he prayed to Maharaj please forgive me please forgive me and Maharaj he was the most compassionate Bhagwan and that's why he said okay no problem as Dinanath but bowed down to Maharaj and he uh, realized his mistake and he asked for forgiveness from Maharaj and as Maharaj said, it's okay. Then Dinanath Bhatt explained to Maharaj his problem. He said, Maharaj, I have one problem. A ghost entered into the body of my daughter and that ghost created new, new problems in my home. And he explained to Maharaj everything, what was happen every day into his home that all the clothes collected by the ghost and throw out from the home and from outside pebbles dust and some small wooden stick and everything dirt throw out inside the home messed up all these foods and vegetables and milk and water and edible oils and everything in the kitchen. In this way, as Dinanath Bhatt explained everything to Maharaj, and again he prayed to Maharaj for forgiving him, then Maharaj said, it's okay, uh, if you want to remove this ghost from the body of your daughter, then you have to become a devotee of mine again, as well as your daughter has also, she had also become a devotee of Bhagwan, so that he can uh, uh, not only Dinanath Bhatt but also his daughter can be removed from these problems of the ghost. Finally, Dinanath Bhatt accepted Maharaj's command and he again became a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan as well as he also inspired her daughter 
his daughter to become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami and so that she can also be removed from the impact or the problems of the course. In this way, Maharaj himself removed this family from the clutches of the course. Now, the next incident written in this chapter, that was the incident regarding a different kind. Because many devotees or the many people, even one who is not a con regular devotee, meaning who is not follow each and every commands of Bhagwan, still, whenever he stood, whenever a person who stand before Bhagwan, always he pray to my uh, pray to Bhagwan that please give me this thing please give me this thing or please do anything uh, or do something so that I can attain this position or this much benefit or this much profit in my business in this way or even a one who is student he definitely asked for a good rank in the examination in this way a people, uh, all the people, most of the people, they ask anything good for their, from uh, from Bhagwan, but this incident is totally different. Why? Because there was a person whose name was Subaram. He was a Brahmin, and he lived in the town of Vishnagar. There, he was in a high position in the authority, meaning in the gov government. And he totally opposed, he remained totally opposed of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine fellowship and his satsang. And that's why whoever satsang is, meaning whoever the devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan in the town, he always tried to make problems for them. Many times as he was an officer in the government, so many times he filed a false reports, false complaints uh, regarding these duties of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And in this way, he always make troubles for the devotees. Even the devotee had never made any mistake, they never even break any of the law of the government still. This Sobaram, he created false uh, accusations regarding satsangis and all times he makes such kind of false accusation on uh, the devotees and make uh, problems for them. Now he continually doing these kind of things. So after many days, he think and even he not only think but even he explain to the devotees that I have made many many problems for you and still I am remain without a problem even though you are the devotees of Bhagwan Swami and still you have the problems you have many many problems and even though I even created problems for you still I am remain without a problem without a single problem so your Bhagwan is not a true Bhagwan. If your Swaminarayan is a true God, then I become a blind within eight days. So just think that people always ask something good for themselves from Bhagwan. And this peop this person he asks for blindness from Bhagwan. Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the true God. He is the all powerful. He is the all doer. And that's why this person, Sobaram, he became a blind before eight days. As only four days passed, he became totally blind. Even before that, all the satsangi, all the devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, they try to convince him that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is a true God, he is a supreme personality, and you should not ask for your blindness from Bhagwan. Please ask something good for him. 
But this Subaram said, No, I do not believe in your Bhagwan. And in this way, he remained firm in his belief that if I become blind within eight days, then your Bhagwan is true God. Then, Maharaj, uh, this is not a big game for Maharaj, and that's why he became a blind within four days, not eight days. And after that, he even understood that Bhagwan Swaminar is a true Bhagwan. The next incident written in this chapter that was a devotee by the name of Sundarji Sutar. He was from Bhuj. He was very from devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. But as he was a Diwan, meaning he was a minister in the government, so he had many work to do in the day. So even though he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, still throughout the day and night, he cannot spare more or even some time for Bhagwan's worship or Bhagwan's bhajan and that's why when the time of his death is near he fell ill and as his hands and feet didn't work so at the time he only laying on his bed and at the time even he tried to remember Bhagwan Swaminarayan but as he did or as he performed whole of his life the many many administrating works for the state that's why he remember all, all of his activities meaning all of his work throughout his life but he did not be ab he did not be able to remember Bhagwan Swamina at that time and that's why as he was a devotee so he has awareness that why I why I did not remember Bhagwan Swaminarayan at this time even though I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan still why these disturbing thoughts come into my mind in this way he struggled to remember Bhagwan Swaminarayan and he also struggled to remove such worldly thoughts enter into his mind because he even become uh, even though he was a devotee still he had such kind of bad thoughts in his mind that's the problem and as he was a devotee so he has awareness and that's why he had uh, he understood his problem that throughout my life I never spare time for meditation I never spare a time for worshiping Bhagwan Swami I never spare a time to sing a kirtan for Maharaj or even I do not spare particular days or hours to serving Santo and that's why I have these bad thoughts even at this time in my mind. In this way uh, Sundarji Sutar he tried many ways to remove such disturbing thoughts from his mind and still He's n he did not succeed to remove these bad thoughts from his mind and at the time he remembered Bhagwan Swaminarayan by his pure heart and he prayed to Maharaj again and again, again and again. Please Maharaj, forgive me. Even I, after becoming your devotee, I didn't spare time for you. I didn't spare time to meditate upon your form. I even stop to listen katha from santo and that's why today i have this situation so please forgive me you are the most compassionate bhagwan so please come at the time in my mind in my heart please do something so that i have your darshan and after listening his prayer even maharaj gave him a darshan in a divine form and after giving him darshan, as Maharaj st stood before his eyes, so Sundarji, he uh, fold both of his hands towards Maharaj and he said, please Maharaj, 
you are the most compensated bhagwan otherwise no one can uh, no one can ready to give me darshan otherwise you and please forgive me for my mistake and please accept me as your devotee and please took me uh, please take me into your akshardham and finally after his uh, pleading or after his praying for akshardham maharaj took him into his akshardham after giving darshan to sundar ji sutar as well as the other devotees and in this way niskuran swami right here that bhagwan swami and never remain in his akshardham at the time of devotee's death because he all always according to his boon according to his words he always come at the time of death to the devotee to take him into his akshardham this is the greatness of bhagwan swami and because only bhagwan swami narayan who is the god who is the supreme lord who come even today to take his duty into his akshardham but there is no any such kind of system for the other gods the other bhagwan like lord sri krishna or lord sri ram they have the system only to send his messenger to the to his duty to take him into their abar like golok and vaikunt but only the system in akshardham for maharaj is that maharaj himself come to the duty to take him into his akshardham this is what niskuran sam describe these incidents in 157th chapter of bhakta chintamani shri ganashyam maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarvadeveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakandham bhaje shri ganashyam maharaj ni 